Welcome to DEs and welcome to another lesson on polynomials. Our topic today is common factoring and our goal, I know what a common factor is and can use it to rewrite an expression as a product. So we're just going to talk about factors going back to what you should have learned in elementary school. Um, do you remember doing lowest common multiples? That's LCMs and the greatest common factors or the GCFs back in elementary school. Well, we already talked about the lowest common multiples when solving systems by elimination. Uh, here's where knowing the greatest common factor comes in handy. So a factor is a number that divides into a larger number evenly. Two factor means to create a multiplication statement for something or write it as a product. So we're going to look at a few simple ones first and then see how that applies to polynomials. So what are the factors of 24 and 36? Now, there's a little tip here that I'm going to pull out. Start with one and work your way up, but be sure to write down the pair of numbers. When you meet in the middle, you're finished. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take a look at 24. And we're going to list all the factors in a set. Well, of course, there's one and 24. So I'm going to list them in pairs. And then there are, is 2 goes into 24 12 times. 3 goes into 24 8 times. 4 goes into 24 6 times. And then 5 doesn't go into 24. And since I've met in the middle, since 5 is in the middle and it's not a factor, I know I've got them all because my factors going down met the factors that were coming up and so there's no more factors of 24. Not whole number factors anyway. Let's try 36. We'll do it the same way. Systematically finding factors is the easiest way to do a lot of stuff in this unit. So 1 and 36 obviously everything goes into, one goes into everything and everything divides evenly by itself, which is the 36. Uh, two goes into 36, 18 times. Three goes into 36, 12 times. Four goes into 36, nine times. Five doesn't go into 36, but six does. And six goes into 36, uh, six times. Usually we don't write it twice though. We just write the one in the middle. And we know we're done because we met in the middle. Okay, so those are all the factors of 24 and 36. Factor the number 24. Well, to factor means to write as a product. So I could factor 24 in quite a number of ways. The easiest one would be to say one times 24. Uh, but I could also write 24 as 2 times 12, or I could write it as 1 times 2 times 12. There's a lot of different ways that you can just factor the number 24. Now, when we're doing polynomials, there's a lot of different ways to factor a polynomial, but I'm going to be using phrases like factor it fully. Um, incidentally, the fully factored 24 would be to factor it as a product of prime numbers. And uh, you may have done those in elementary school as factor trees. You start with 24 and you break it down. And we'll break it down into two of its smaller factors, or two of the factors that are close together, which would be 4 and 6. But 4 and 6 break down further. 4 is 2 times 2 and 6 is 2 times 3. And so 24 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Um, and this is the factored fully version or the prime factorization of 24. We won't be doing a lot of that. I'm not going to be having you do factor trees, but just calling back something that you may have done in elementary school. Now it says, what is the greatest common factor of 24 and 36? Well, let's look back at our list and see what we've got here. And here's the tip. Look through your list of factors for each number, which is the largest. So let's take a look. Um, 24 and 36, 18 is not in this list. There we go. That's the biggest number that appears on both 24 and 36. So the greatest common factor of 24 and 36 is 12. Okay, moving along. 
we want to find out what the greatest common factor is of a monomial. So what happens when we start throwing things in there? Well, if I were to do a factor tree of this thing, I would say 12 is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3. And then x squared is x times x. Maybe I shouldn't use all of this. 2 times 2 times 3 times x. And then there's another x. And then there's a y and a y and a y and a z. And those are all the possible factors of this one. Okay. Um, notice that there's, there's a factor of x. And there would be a factor of those two x's together. So x squared is a factor. So we have to find the greatest common factor between these two things. And there's a very systematic way of doing it. So step one, determine the greatest common factor of the coefficients. So what's the biggest number that goes into both 12 and 18? That answer there would be 6 is the greatest common factor between 12 and 18. Step two. Determine the variables common to all. Well, this has an x, and this has an x, and this has a y, and this has a y. So the variables common to all are x, y. They don't both have a z, so that can't be part of the common factor. And step three says, determine the greatest factors of the common variables. Basically, you're looking for the lowest exponent on that variable between the monomials. So what this actually means is that they both have an x. But how many x's do they both have? Well, this one has two x's, and this one has two x's and then one more x. So what's common between the two of them is two x's. So they both have at least two x's. And if we're looking at the y's, well, this one has three y's, but this one only has one y. Um, so we only use one y because the number of y's have to be in both of them. Now when you put your steps together, our common factor is 6x squared y. And so we're going to just find the common factor of a few things as a little bit of practice. This says find the GCF of the following monomials. So remember the first thing we have to look for is the greatest common factor of the, ver of the coefficients. So we take a look at 3 and 6 and 9, and the biggest number that goes into all three of those is 3. Now take a look at the variables. Well, the only variable in play here is x, and they all have an x. So 3x is definitely a factor, but do they all have more than 1x? Yeah, they actually do. This one has 2. This one has 5, and this one has 3, so they all have at least 2x's. So 3x squared is our common factor. Looking at this one, what's the biggest number that goes into 28, 14, and 70? Well, that would be 14. 14 is, or 70 is 14 times 5. Uh, so now we have to take a look at the factors, and they all have an x. They all have a y. This one has a z, but they don't all have a z. So they all have an x, and they all have a y. And now I have to figure out just how many x's they have. This one has 2. This one has 1. This one has 6. So they all have at least 1. So we could put a 1 there, but generally we don't do that. Now how many y's do they have? This one has 4. This one has 6. This one has 2. So they all have at least 2. These two have more than two, but since this one doesn't, we can't say that they all have more than two. So they all have at least two. And so 14xy squared is the greatest common factor. Moving right along. How do we find a common monomial factor? Well, now how do I write this as a product? So step one says, determine the GCF of the terms. So I have to take a look at the coefficients, eight, 16 and 24, and the biggest number that goes into all three of those is 8. Now, what variables are common to all? Well, x's. 
This one doesn't have a Y, so Y can't be a common factor because it's not in all of them. And how many X's are there in all of them? This one has three, this one has four, this one has seven. So it looks like three is our greatest common factor because this one has three, the other ones have three and then some on top of that, but they all have at least three. So I've got the greatest common factor. Place the greatest common factor in front of a set of brackets. Divide the polynomial by the greatest common factor to get the expression within the brackets. Remember, you are dividing. When you divide powers within with the same base, you subtract the exponents. So taking a look at this one, this means that I'm going to take the greatest common factor, 8x uh, cubed, put it in front of a set of brackets, and now I'm dividing each of these terms by 8x cubed dividing. So when I divide 8x cubed by 8x cubed, um, well that's some, dividing something by itself, so I get 1. Now when I divide this term by 8x cubed, well 16 divided by 8, I'm going to get minus 2. And x to the fourth divided by x cubed is simply an x. Remember, we have to subtract the exponents. And the y squared is not divided by anything, so it stays a y squared. Now, when I divide this term by 8x cubed, I get 3. And then x to the seventh divided by x cubed is x to the fourth. Remember, it's subtracting exponents, and that y doesn't get divided by anything. So this is that expression up there in factored form. Let's see what this note says here. The expression in the brackets should always have the same number of terms as the original polynomial. And if you wanted to, you could always expand it again using distributive law to see if you've actually done it correctly. Now, you don't have to do this every time. Please don't think you do, but you can expand it back out. That's why I'm doing it in a different color. That's going to give me 8x cubed minus 16x, x cubed times x is x to the fourth, and then that y doesn't get multiplied by anything, so it's y cubed squared, and then I multiply over here, 8 times 3 is plus 24, x to the fourth times x to the third is x to the seventh, remember when you're multiplying you add them, and then y is just tacked on the end, and so if we compare this to what we had originally up top, they're the same thing. And that's what should happen. They need to be the same thing um, when you're done comparing. Now, again, you don't have to do this expansion every time, but you can just do a double check in your head to see if they come out to be the same thing. Now, factor the following polynomials. Well, we have to find the GCF. So of 9, 6, and 3, the GCF is 3. Um, they don't all have an X, so the GCF is 3. So now I need to divide each of these terms by 3. When I divide 9x squared by 3, I get 3x squared. When I divide 6 by 3, I get negative 2, and it still has an x, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that's the factored version of it. This one. Um, the biggest number that goes into 12, 6, and 24 is 6. Um, they all have an x this time, um, but this one only has 1x, so I can't divide out more than what the smallest one has. So now I divide each of these terms by the greatest common factor. And you don't have to write this down here. If you can do it all in your head and write it in the bracket, I'd actually prefer that. But 12x cubed divided by 6x is 2x squared. And then 6x squared divided by 6x, I'm going to get a negative. And remember, watch the signs, negative x. And then the 24x divided by 6x is just going to give me a plus 4. One couple more here. Greatest common factor between 14 and 21 is 7. The, this one has an A, but this one doesn't. So A's aren't part of the common factor. This one has a B, and this one has a B, and this one has two B's, and this one has four B's. So they all both at least have two. 
And then this one has a C, but this one doesn't, so C is not part of the common factor. So 7B squared is the greatest common factor. Now we're going to divide each of these by 7B squared. 14 divided by 7 is 2. And then this B squared is going to take out two of those B, B's, so I have A squared, B squared. Subtract 21 divided by 7 is 3. The B squareds are going to cancel each other out completely because B squared divided by B squared is simply 1. And then C squared stays by itself. Okay, we've got one more here. Uh, the greatest common factor here is going to be 5. So I put 5 in front of the brackets, and then I've got this one has only 1m, and they all have at least 1m. And this one has only 1n, but they all at least have an n. So we say 5mn, and then we divide each of these by 5mn. So we get... 5m squared, and then n divided by n is 1, so we don't write times 1. Subtract 3, uh, m squared divided by m is simply m, and n squared divided by n is simply n. And on the end, 5mn, well, 5 divided by 5 is 1, but we don't usually write that. m divided by m is 1, we don't usually write that. n cubed divided by n is n squared. The only time you're going to write that one down is if the if it divides out completely. And so if if this was 5m n cubed, I'd have to write an uh, 1 on the end. But since the n squared is still there, we don't usually write the 1 n squared. Okay, last we have this uh, sort of a application problem. Find an expression for the shaded region. Write your answer in factored form if possible. So the shaded region, we have a big rectangle minus a small square. So the area of the shaded region is going to equal the rectangle minus the square. And if you want to put stuff like this down to organize your thoughts, that's great. The big rectangle is going to be x minus 8 times 3x minus 2. And the square we have to subtract off is x plus 4 squared. So this is an expression. I have to expand and simplify this expression and then see if it factors afterwards. So I'm going to expand this out using double distributive law. So I get 3x squared. The outside term is negative 2x, and the inside term is negative 24x, so that's negative 26x. And then negative 18 times negative 2 is positive 16. Here we're squaring a binomial, so remember we square the first term, we get x squared. Then we multiply those two things together to get 4x, and we know there are two of them, so we have to double it. So we have plus 8x. And then on the end, we have plus 16. When I take the brackets off of this, nothing happens. 3x squared minus 26x plus 16. But this negative is going to affect everything in that bracket. The only thing it's going to do is change the signs, though. So minus x squared minus 8x minus 16. And now collecting like terms, I got a 3x squared and a negative x squared is 2x squared. I've got a negative 26x and a negative 8x is a negative 34x. And then I have a positive 16 and a negative 16. Um, and a positive 16 and negative 16 are going to cancel each other out. So this is my expression, and it says factor it if possible. So uh, I can take out a 2 because it goes into both x, uh, both terms. And they both have at least 1x, but this one only has 1x. So I'm only going to use the 1x. And when I divide each of those things by 2x, 2x squared divided by 2x is just plain old x. And 34 divided by, 34x divided by 2x is going to give me minus 17. And that is our answer, and that concludes um, finding common factors.